Hey YouTube, welcome to the Christ Church International channel. I'm so excited that you found it. My name is Matthew Spencer. I'm the associate pastor here. Today's message is going to bless your life. So sit back, grab a notepad, grab your Bible, and get ready to receive a fresh word from God. Here we go. Well, I'm excited, guys. I get to preach today. I'm going to preach on God wants you to prosper. Now, it might surprise you that that's a controversial topic. Some Christians actually don't believe that. Would you believe that? <laughs> I'm sure many of you already know. If, you're, if you've been a Christian any length of time, you know that um, that is a controversial topic in the body of Christ. Um, but I want to tell you today that God wants you to prosper. He wants you to increase. And so I'm going to declare that word over your life today. And I told the earlier group that I'm going to be preaching to myself. And you just get the privilege of listening to this message <laughs> that I'm preaching to myself. Okay? <laughs> so say, say to yourself, say, Matthew. Matthew. Don't say Matthew. <laughs> God, God wants you to prosper. God wants you to prosper. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And you know, um, we really are blessed, okay? If you're living in America, you're blessed. And I even say the poorest in America are blessed. The opportunity we have, the access to, I mean, you know, some of our biggest concern is how big our TV is. You know what I'm saying? And that we're so blessed. You know, everybody's got an iPhone or some kind of phone. Uh, we're blessed. The kind of access we have to information is amazing. Um, so, so, but we, gotta, we also have to press into what God wants for us. He wants us to increase. Yes. He wants us to, to be blessed. So as I said, it may surprise you to find out that many Christians don't believe that it's God's will for them to prosper. But as in all things, our final authority for truth must be based on what God's word says yeah. in the Bible alone. And there's a quote by Martin Luther, you know, the, the great apostle that... that that led the charge in the reformation of the church, the Catholic church at the time. And he said, a man standing on God's word has more authority than all, the Pope and all of his councils. So if you are standing on the word of God, it's eternal. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. If you stand on the scripture, you have more authority than the Pope himself. You have more authority than every religious leader if you stand on this scripture. Now, of course, as I would always say that we have to be under authority. You know, what army would work or function if there wasn't a, a hierarchy, if there wasn't a chain of command? So we have to walk in, in that safety of the army, um, but we stand on the authority of God's word. Praise the Lord. So we have to base what we believe not on our opinions, not on religious traditions. You know, Jesus said that, that you make, you know, the word of God of no power because you are, you know, the traditions of men. You know, make God's word of no power. We can't base what we believe on our experiences even, or our present circumstances, or, and this is a big one, our family's way of thinking or doing things. And you could actually add that my church's way of thinking or doing things. My city's way of thinking or doing things. We have to to base our lives, what does the scripture say? And um, not what does I think the scripture say? Or what is my opinion of what the scripture says? What does the scripture actually say? And as we know, the scripture is a living book. And we need to continually look into the scripture to see. So my first point today, for those of you who are paying attention and or listening. <laughs> I love when you say pay attention. People pay attention. Wow, okay, cool. God wants you to prosper. Amen. Matthew. Because <laughs> I'm preaching to myself, remember? Go for it, Matthew. <laughs> Third John 2. Wow, praise the Lord. That was exciting. <laughs> Third John 2 says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. I shared a story earlier when we were on the street. You know, we've been doing street evangelism for five years. Wow. That's awesome. Praise the Lord. Isn't that awesome? You know, you, you step out and then, you know, you become what you do. Yeah. 
And so praise the Lord, we're doing that. But I had a memory, one of the times I was out with Karen Wagner, we were at a park and we were talking to a Jewish man. They were at like a playground. And, um, and I remember she said, she always likes to ask people, how can I pray for you? And this man said, just pray for health and wealth. And I was like, wow. You know, Jewish people, you know, they are the chosen people. God revealed, either gave them Moses and the law. And they don't have, they're not, it's not complicated to them. The two fundamental needs of our life is prosperity, financial prosperity, and physical prosperity, health. And somehow, you know, the Christians who have been given authority and salvation through Christ, more revelation knowledge, we have a difficult time understanding that God wants to prosper us and God wants us to be healthy. But the Jewish people, God's chosen people, they get it. It's not complicated. So he just prayed health and wealth. That's all. (laughs) Health and wealth. What do you want prayer for? Health and wealth. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Beloved, I pray you may prosper in in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. I'm going to preach my soul happy here today. (laughs) So the second point is the cry of our hearts. You guys want to guess what is the cry of our heart? You're probably going to say, you know, Jesus or something religious, right? Growth. I want to grow. That's the cry of our heart. God, I want to grow. And I'll, I'll just want to share first, you know, if you were to say Jesus, that's good, right? I'm not mocking that at all. No, because that should be the cry of your heart. But I'm talking just a fundamental in every human heart is the cry for growth and increase. And Jabez is my example here. I don't know if you've heard of Jabez. First Chronicles 4, 9 through 10. It's just a real short story about this man. And it says, he might have been a boy. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called him his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called, how would you like to have your name pain? You know, hey, suffering. Hey, pain. Not a great name, right? I think they give you a complex. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Isn't that awesome? So he's just crying with all of his heart, God, I want a larger territory. I want you to increase me. I want to grow. I feel restrained, held back, whatever it is. I want to be blessed. I want to increase. So it's amazing. It says, so God granted him what he requested. So my third point here, the first one is God wants you to prosper. Second, the cry of our hearts is growth. And thirdly, I bet you didn't know this, but Jesus grew. And I've been learning this past week about the humanity of Jesus. You know, quite often as Christians, we come from the perspective that Jesus is the Son of God. We get it, right? That's what we're, we're taught, which is true. But the disciples, they came from the opposite. They, they knew him as a man first, a rabbi, a teacher. And then they started realizing, wait, he, you are God. You are the Son of God. You know, when Jesus said to Peter, who do you say I am? And Jesus, he, Peter said, you're the Son of God. You are the Christ. And, and he said, the Father has revealed this to you. Right. And so but we don't we don't understand or we don't think too much about Jesus, you know, that in the sense that, you know, he liked to eat fish, for instance, or he, you know, he grilled fish, you know, just simple human things and not this is a whole nother message. But Jesus, I mean, he lived 30 years of his life, just every day, mundane, you know, working, commuting, spending time with family, education, exercise. I never thought about that. You know, did Jesus lift weights? I don't know. (laughs) So those things we don't think about. But my point is Jesus grew physically. And I pointed out some of the kids, you know, who, you know, Esai's growing still. Uh, Some of the other kids are growing. Zayden's here today. Um, These guys, they're still growing. Jesus had to grow. And just physically. Luke uh, 52 says, and Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. 
And I want to point out what the word grew means. It's Greek and it's prokopto. Pro, prokopto. And it means to cut forward and advance. So it's, it's really different. We just think grow, right? But it actually means, and the original usage was pi, a pioneer cutting his way through the brushwood. So if you can, you know, we see these movies where these guys are chopping through the jungle or whatever, looking for a hidden treasure, um, and, and like Indiana Jones or something, right? And, but that's what it means, is growing means chopping through. It's like, you know, um, advancing, making progress. And in the Thayer's Greek lexicon, it means to lengthen out by hammering as a smith forges metals, and metaphorically to increase or to make progress. So does that give you the idea that growth is easy? Right, chopping through a jun- jungle, hammering metal, or that doesn't get the idea that growth is easy, right? But it says Jesus, if you could, he's like, Jesus cut his way through the, the jungle to grow. Jesus, you know, was hammered like, you know, so how many of you feel like you're getting hammered right now in God's forge, right? Yeah. Maybe it's not a bad thing. Maybe growth is not terrible. God wants you to grow. And so growth doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be easy. And I think as we become adults, you know, kids, they got it easy on some level. I know kids have, you know, difficult lives too. But adults have to make a bigger effort, I think, to continue to grow. And I shared earlier that I heard a quote about, you know, you are, you know, the people you meet, you grow by the people you meet and the books you read. And it's easy for adults to get comfortable not meeting new people and not reading new books. Right? And what happens is we start to stagnate, but our heart's crying, I want to grow, I want to grow. We start to get plateau and and not grow because it takes effort. It takes effort. I love, I haven't read his book, Dick Van Dyke, you guys know him? You know, he, I think he's still alive. He's probably like, how old is that guy? He's probably in like late 80s, 90s, 90s. And his title of his book, this is it. You don't have to read the book. I'm not getting paid to advertise for Dick Van Dyke. It's keep on moving or something like that. Just keep on moving. You know, I've heard they say, you know, uh, live fish can swim up the river, but dead fish go down, you know? So you got to keep moving. Life is about motion, motion, motion. So growth is not always easy, but it's, it's, it's necessary. So what are we talking about today? God wants you to prosper, right? <laughs> See if you're paying attention. <laughs> okay, so my one, two, three, four. My fourth point is be fruitful and multiply. I think somehow we kind of miss this prime directive, I guess you could say, of God through all of this religious gobbledygook or even disappointments, discouragements. You say, oh, you know what? I've been disappointed, so maybe God wasn't serious about healing my body or prospering me, or giving me the promises that he promised. And I was reading about Jacob with the Jacob's Ladder, and God said, I will not leave you until I've accomplished everything I promised. How awesome is that? God speaks that over me right now and over you. God's not going to leave you until he finishes what he's promised. Praise the Lord. you believe that? I receive that too. So, It's God's desire, even command, that you be fruitful and multiply and increase in numbers. And this is the challenging thought. If you are not increasing somehow, and I'm not going to tell you what's right or wrong for you. It's important for us not to judge each other's stories. You know, the rich man can judge the educator because they're not rich. Well, that doesn't, just because you have more money doesn't mean you're a better person. You're just not called to what they're called to do, right? But if we're not increasing somehow, you are not obeying the Lord's command and desire for your life. God's appointed us to bear fruit. Um, And we must realize that it was always God's plan to bless the entire human race, first through Abraham's descendants and then through Jesus Christ. And I don't have time to to go through all the verses, but in Genesis 1.28, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in numbers. Fill the earth, subdue it, rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. And that was the perfect creation. Then God judged the earth with a flood, which did happen, by the way. Global flood. Just look at the fossil record. It's a whole other discussion. 
If there really was a worldwide flood, what would you expect to see? Billions of dead things buried in rock layers, laid down by water, all of the earth. What, hap what do we happen to see? Billions of dead things buried in rock layers, laid down by water, all over the earth. Isn't that faith building? <laughs> okay. Genesis 9, after the flood, that was fun. After the flood, God said the exact same thing. God's single-minded, right? He said to Noah and his sons, be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth. He blessed Abraham, and then we jump to Jesus. What did Jesus tell us to do? He said, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. So God is single-minded. His, his, his plan for us is to continue to increase. The scripture says God's kingdom is a king of increase. And of its increase, there will be no end. So are you part of the kingdom? Yes. So what's God's will for you? To increase. to increase. Praise the Lord. Galatians 3, 13 through 14 says, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law, having become a curse for me. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon Matthew in Christ Jesus. Right. Praise the Lord. It says Gentile. How many Gentiles we got in the room? Probably quite a bit, right? <laughs> You're grafted in. If you're in Christ Jesus, you're grafted into the tree, which is the chosen people, right? You're chosen. Amen. You're part of the Jewish nation now, Christ Jesus. And that blessing that was upon Abraham to multiply, to be fruitful, to, to, to increase. Right? God promised Abraham, you're going to have as many descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand of the sea. Abraham God said that. So that same blessing is upon us. Praise the Lord. And I could keep preaching for probably another hour how God wants to increase us. And as I said earlier, it's health and wealth. God wants to bless us. God wants us to bless us. Jesus came for salvation for the whole man, spirit, soul, and body. And of course, it's not just for us to just, you know, revel in our glory. You know, what did Nebuchadnezzar do? He's like, flourishing in his palace. He said, because of my great glory. This is because of my great glory. So what happened? Not good, right? You can read the story, but we give God the glory and we use the prosperity to bless others and to advance the kingdom and preach the gospel to the nations. Amen. So I just want to pray over you and bless you today. Lord, I thank you that your people, every person here, every person watching, listening, Lord, we bless them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you. The, word, the entrance of your word brings light. And Lord, we see today that you want us to increase in numbers. You want us to be blessed. So Lord, we just take that with childlike faith and we say, yes, Lord, bless us today. Increase us. Let us be a symbol and source of blessing, Lord. And uh, Lord, I, I just pray if there are any hangups and if people are saying, so why not? Why, so why is this not working? Lord, you are the one that gives us wisdom. So I'm asking that you would show each individual the wisdom, the key, Lord, to, if there's any unfruitfulness, Lord, that you would give us the key. If there's, if there's unfruitful trees that we need to chop down or uproot out of our lives, I'm asking that you show us those things so that we can uh, fulfill your command and increase and prosper. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So say amen if you receive it. Amen. <laughs> you can also give online right now on PayPal. Um, yeah, the giving there. So if, if you're online and you're sending... A check in the mail, Christ Church International, P.O. Box 2125, Longmont, Colorado, 80502. Or you can do PayPal by going to our ChristChurchInternational.org forward slash give. And I like to say we're the purple church. So let's, let's pray over um, our tithes and offering. And purple is a royal color. Isn't that cool? <laughs> guess what? Just, just out of interest, guess what this block, they designated the color for this block in Longmont. Purple. This is the purple block. Praise the Lord. That's not a coincidence. It's, yeah, the creative district and the purple purple block. So praise the Lord. Lord, we just thank you right now for, for the tithes and offerings that are coming. Lord, you've commanded us to be fruitful and multiply. So I just, we command that right now, Lord, that, that prosperity to begin and increase to the next level. For those who have received this message in faith today, Lord, we just thank you that we are increasing 
we're not decreasing, and we're increasing because you commanded us to increase in numbers. So we thank you for that today, in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for watching the video today. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel by hitting this button down here, or check out our other videos.